Hey guys, this is Bruce. I did have somebody send me a question regarding information system security. And they said, uh, hello Bruce, I have been watching your videos for some time and I want to thank you for your information that you put out there. That's pure knowledge. I'm trying to change career. I get this question a lot. That's why this is a good one. I'm trying to change careers from HR, human relations, to information technology and really need a head start and advice to uh, channel me to success. And I have a family member who's volunteered to teach me the CAP so I can take the certification and start applying for jobs, but I have a lot of doubt in taking the CAP. All right. So... This is a person who's trying to go from one career path, HR, to information technology, and they are trying to take the CAP, and that's a certified authorization professional in order to get into this field. All right, so what I would do in this situation, especially if I'm coming from HR, is I would start at the help desk, and there's many different names for it. It's customer support, technical support field technician you got to start there the cap is kind of a mid tier kind of upper tier certification and it's assuming that you know a lot already about it that's not to say that you can't take the cap and get a job it is possible what i'm saying is normally when you're an entry level person you know going from you've never done it before to now i'm going to do it you got to start from the bottom right just like an hr you wouldn't start as the senior HR person who's running the whole floor. You would have to start off as a junior level HR person and learn the ropes. Same thing in information technology. You're not going to just go jump right into security and be and do that full time. You're not going to just go right into authorization professional and do that full time. That's not how it works. So typically how it works is you're going to start from the bottom with desk and stuff. But I'm talking about entry level help desk person where you're not you probably would be waking more as an hr person when you start if you're an hr person been doing it for six years or something you probably make more money doing that than you would if you started off doing a uh, help desk but that said you could do things like program you might want to consider if you're watching this consider doing like program management which can get in the it program management basically somebody who helps assists in managing the flow of the project so you would help a bunch of it people stay on track with their milestones to get a project done and a lot of times that project manager or that program manager does have to know a little bit of the terminology they have to work a lot with the it professionals and the reason why i suggest this for an hr person is because an hr person is very used to working with lots of documents and working with people and they understand that that's an important, that's an extremely important, that's their whole job. This is an extremely important part of doing the work. So that's just something. And then here's the thing. Project and program managers make a lot of money. Like they don't have to be super deep in IT, but they, they that field is one of the top tier fields that you can get into that's considered IT that does make some money. So it, it's just something to consider. So number one. Consider getting in a help desk. If you want to be technical, consider help desk first. Try to get a help desk job. I mean, if you happen to be in sitting in a, a position where you're doing HR, you actually you may have an advantage over somebody coming off the street cold because you know how corporate environments work. You know how the flow of all this stuff works. You know that there's a chain of a command and how and all that stuff. So you could actually think think about making a lateral change, meaning you're in the same. Let's say you work at AT and T and you're in HR department, right? And you're like, there's IT guys there. You might just apply for an IT job within IT, AT&T and then go ahead and go get that job, get some experience, and then begin to level up. That's what I would do if I were you. That's the quickest way. But another option would be to do a program management position. I just want to show you really quick what I mean by project managers. Project top paying jobs certifications i just want to show you guys real quick what i mean by i feel like project manager 
they're kind of slept on. People don't talk about it enough, but it's actually a pretty good, it's a pretty good career path that does intersect with IT. I know, like, especially in larger organizations, we really need project managers and we need people who know what they're doing. They don't have to know be super technical. They have to be able to work with all kinds of people, IT professionals, managers, and C-level people, right? So you as an HR person, you, you're you already used to doing that kind of stuff. So it might actually help. And let me see if this is the one I'm talking about here. This is not what I was looking for. I am looking for top paying IT jobs. Watch this. Is this it? And I've covered this before. And project manager has come up on this list a few times because it's it's a high paying job that's very much needed in our industry. And there's still some demand for it. Top paying IT certifications. There it is right there. Check this out. What I did was I went to Google and I typed in top paying IT positions. And I just wanted to give you an idea of how powerful project management is and how it it's definitely should be on your list of things to do if you care about making money, if you want to get in as close as possible to IT, but maybe you don't want to get too technical. It's just another path you should consider. Now look at this list of top paying certificates. You've got Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect. Now I want you to notice a pattern here. You've got AWS, that's Amazon, web services that's also a cloud service certified solutions architect right and look at the notice how much the average amount is on how much these guys get paid these are both cloud positions cloud is right now very very hot so something to keep in mind then you got cism which is certified information security manager now we're getting into security and then there's another one here that's also by these are two right here by osaka that's an organization who, who uh, created and they proctor this particular, manage this particular, these two certifications. C-RISC certified in risk and information system control. I might actually take this and this one at some point myself because this is risk is what I do. But yeah, look at this, 148,000, 148. This is not even like this is like real numbers right here. And then boom, project manager. People sleep on this job. Not even super technical. I'm not saying it's easy. You know, I would definitely not say that. It definitely has its own common body of knowledge that you would have to dive into and know. There's a lot of different terminology and phrases that you're going to have to learn that are not necessarily IT specifically. It, Like I said, it intersects with IT. It goes a lot into like a system development life cycle, like the... the what that means is how a system behaves and the status of a system from cradle to grave. Like when we're developing, is there security implemented in there? Is it, are all the stakeholders involved? What goes into actually developing or designing the system all the way to what do we do when the system is, is no longer used, it's obsolete? How do we get rid of this system? Like there's all of these different phases of a system. And so a program manager has to know those phases and what takes place in each one of those different life cycle phases. So that's uh, what a program manager does. So don't sleep on it. It's, it's a pretty good certification, pretty good field to go in. But let's kind of touch a few of these. I want to show you a little bit of a pattern here. CISSP, also security-based. CISA, also security-based. Here's another cloud-based certification, a lower-level cloud-based certification. Still making six figures, by the way. VMware, yep, VMware is also kind of cloud-based. The back end of uh, virtualization is doing really good. Lots of jobs for that. ITIL, I don't think that this is valid, to be honest with you, because a lot of people who have this ITIL certification, which is literally like a 40-question test, and, and before you get all happy about this 40-question test, you have to take their training, which I don't know how much that costs, but you have to take their training, and then and then you take the 40-question test, you know. And I got a question here from AK, and I'll, I'll get to that when I finish this segment here. But 
certified, uh, Microsoft certified Azure fundamentals. This is also virtualization. So yeah, if you could see here, the, the pattern here, lots of cloud stuff, right? So something like 10% or more of this list is cloud-based. Then you have a security, like another 10% is security. You got four or five different ones here that are security based. You got program manager, which people sleep on and you shouldn't sleep on it because this one's uh, this one's a good one to look into. Then you've got virtualization and then you've got more technical networking type stuff. CCNP is a really good certification though. My buddy has that one. He does really well and he has a CISP. So what the hell would you want a CISP if you already have a CCNP? I don't know, but... <laughs> And that's I think that's about it for my questions, unless they're likely spam. Does anyone have any questions at all about anything? Now, I put my email there. If it's more of a personal question, you can contact me. Like I said, I have the time right now. I can't promise in the future that I'll, I'll continue to have as much time as I do because I'm have I've got a lot I'm getting a lot of students, which is pretty awesome. And so, I you know, it, at some point, I'm going to have to not not take personal requests <laughs> but right now i can so contact me there if you if you're interested link up with me on linkedin and of course you can sign up for convocourses.com if you're interested in having a more in-depth personal one-on-one -on -one communication sign up for those courses i got great information there that uh, far exceeds what what i have right here on these on my podcast way more than i have on my site way more than i have on youtube it's way more in depth it's way more targeted so go ahead and check that out if you guys don't have any other questions i'm gonna we're gonna end this one thanks everybody for all your support thank you guys for attending these lives i do these lives every weekend if you have some questions you want to talk to me live if you want to do a webinar about risk management framework which i may do in the future let me know that is if you want to keep up with me though go to convocourses.com sign up for free or you can go to youtube.com search for convo courses and subscribe turn on the bell notification and you'll catch these lives when i get on and you can ask me questions all right guys that is it i'm gonna end it here